All right. Touch event is the gateway to a lot of coolness, and uh, I'm going to step through each of the phases of a touch event so you understand them, and then we'll move on to more complex examples that use them. But let's start out with a simple empty game object, and I'll add an FSM so that we can talk about various stages. So within device, you can uh, use a touch event, which is right here. I will add one of those to the FSM. And let's talk about these four options. Touch phase is by far the most important thing we need to go over here. There are three phases that the Apple OS uh, tracks with its hardware. Began, moved, stationary, ended, canceled. Now these are, these are Apple things. These aren't Playmaker or Unity things. The, <laughs> the Playmaker and Unity software just pays attention to these as the, uh, as the hardware reports it, the hardware and the software reports it, and then we do things with these various phases. A began phase is when the finger touches the screen for the first time. That means you just touch it, and that was a began touch phase. After that, we've got a moved phase that can be tracked. Once you've touched, these other things can become possible to look at, right? You have to do the began touch phase first. Moved means the finger's moving, kind of self-explanatory, uh, and stationary, means that, of course, the finger is stationary. Now, stationary could happen immediately after began. You could touch it and not move. It could be in stationary. You could move the finger and then go into stationary. You know, you kind of, kind of starting to see how you can flow around and track these. Ended means that the finger was lifted from the screen or otherwise somehow disappeared. Uh, this can happen if you drag the finger all the way off the edge of the screen and onto the edge of the hardware. It's, it's still ended, right? The finger has left the screen in some way. And finally, canceled uh, is a little strange. This is usually something that happens uh, from the OS itself, like a phone call comes in or your battery dies or you know crazy things like that. You won't be using this quite as much as the other ones, but it's really important to know about because at times you want to Make sure to check for that. These simple phases give you a lot, of, uh, a lot of options for how to deal with your fingers and track what's going on at any given time. Let's go ahead and get rid of this and look at a more specific example. I've got our old friend, the crazy, cruddy wood, wooden crate here. And let's look at this simple FSM I've created. I start out in an idle state and I have one touch event and it looks for the began touch phase. That means it's, hang it's hanging around waiting for a finger click. Right? That's all it is, or a finger touch. And when it finds one, it's going to trigger the touch began event right there. Pretty easy. If a finger touches me, then go off into the next state. Now this thing here, store finger ID, what happens is I can tag that finger. I can tag that specific finger. Why would I want to do that, you say? Well. I want to know the difference between, say, two different fingers when they touch. If one finger is being tracked uh, to do particular things, like maybe it's moving a slider on your screen, uh, you don't want another finger touch to screw that up. Uh, it gets a little more complex, too. If you have two fingers touch and you lift one, you need to know which one came up, because if they're each uh, triggering two different actions, you want to know that the right finger ending ends the right event that you were triggering. It's important to tag the finger, and this is just an int variable, integer variable I've set up called finger1, and I store it right here. So whatever touches the screen in this event gets tagged as finger1, and that can be checked somewhere else. So let's look at what happens when we move into our touching state. First of all, I look for more touch events. Uh, the first one here is ended. So uh, I want to know, did the finger that just touched, did it lift off the screen again? So did somebody touch it and lift? That would kind of be a tap. And if you'll notice, finger ID here in touch event, we stored it down here on the other one. But with the same touch event, we can filter and only check for a specific finger. And right here, finger ID. So in other words, it's going to ignore any other touches that occur right here, except from finger ID. Uh, sorry, finger ID 1. So we're looking for an ended phase from finger 1. And if it, if it uh, finds this, it's going to trigger the touch ended, which means uh, you lifted your finger, so let's go back and wait. 
And that's all that happens. If you touch, I flow between those two states. Uh, I have a second touch event. It's totally okay to have more than one touch event in one state. Uh, in fact, you'll want to do this quite often. So here, once again, I'm filtering for only finger one. I don't really care if any other fingers touch the screen. And I'm looking for moved. So if the user touches and then moves their finger, it will trigger right here this moving event. And I don't, again, need to store finger ID because I already have one. I'm not looking for new touches. And finally, I've thrown in a filter for finger one and a touch canceled. And if that happens, it essentially does the same thing as uh, a touch ended. It moves back here to the beginning state for us. If this state is, is active, this rotate action is going to rotate the cube in the Y angle, or the crate here, just so we have some feedback to know what state we're in. Uh, you could do anything here. You could play an animation. You could uh, increase the value of, you know, like you're pressing a button to do a boost on a, on a speedboat in your game or whatever. You can take any action you want here while also looking for other touches. So the rotation of the cube is just to show you that we can uh, do action right here in the same state while this is going on. You don't always want your touch events uh, and your game action in the same place. Uh, in fact, oftentimes it's going to be better if you separate them. But for this example, uh, it, it's, it works great in the same spot. So that's it to rotate there. But let's say that this, uh, this moving event occurs. Let's go look at what happens here. Uh, I do a different rotate. I rotate on a different angle here, just so we see uh, that something different is going on. But otherwise, I'm looking for the same things. Finger one ended, then I'm going to go back to the idle state right there. If finger one becomes stationary, instead of moving, I'm looking for stationary. So if the finger stops moving, we're going to move right back here into the touching state through the move stopped event. If you move and stop and move and stop, it's going to loop back and forth between these two things and change which axis of the cube is being rotated. Uh, that easy. And again, a touch canceled event which flows back into the idle state. This is something that, again, kind of like a lot of these other examples, I really suggest you rig this up yourself or use this example and uh, just start touching your device and seeing what happens and, and look at the output uh, either from the state name or from like just rotate a cube or something like I'm doing here and play with it to really get an idea uh, of how these touches work, uh, you know, how much you move them, how they feel, all that. Just get comfortable with it through a simple example like this, and then we can move on and do much cooler things using this as a gateway. So let's take a look at the iPad. So here's our friend, the cube, running again on the iPad. And if I touch, we get that rotating state. And if I start moving my finger, see we get a different rotation and you can see it kind of jitter there like when I do this because it's actually pretty sensitive holding your finger stationary is uh, almost tricky <laughs> so you can see it doesn't matter where I'm moving as long as it's moving we get that one type of rotation and if I hold still you can actually see if you look in the middle it's, it's jumping around it's pretty hard to keep my finger still and letting go stops it so that is touch events 